Welcome to Mature Living. I'm Mary Yanez, Director of the Senior Adult Program at the El Paso Community College. We lost someone very special just recently from our college family. And you may remember her and know her as the founder of the El Paso Chopin Piano Festival. Dr. Lucy Scarborough passed away on June 13. We were very sad to hear the news here on Mature Living because she visited our show quite regularly to share the information that uh, uh, about the Chopin festivals, about her committee, and how proud she was of the 25 years that she had been working on this beautiful event that she organized each, each year. And actually she brought in famous pianists from all over the world who actually loved coming to El Paso. She worked at the El Paso Community College for many years, and we recall her in a photo uh, where she was playing the piano at our first EPCC graduation. It was a commencement ceremony. And I remember her, her also uh, while working at the college that she used to direct the community civic uh, symphony. And they also played at the Don Haskins for our commencement exercises. She was very active in the music department. She was the first coordinator of the music department, by the way, and always so passionate about her students and about how music was a great part of her life. Uh, I mentioned to Ginger in a response to the message that Lucy had passed, I believe at 92 years old, that I felt that Lucy had music notes in her heart and that you know, she was so passionate about bringing classical music, the, the music of Chopin to El Paso. And she actually taught us how to appreciate classical music. And so as we re recall, Lucy, we, we want to share some clips of some of the interviews we had with her over the years. Uh, some of her committee members are in the videos. Her daughter, Ginger, uh, is also in the, in the video. Uh, so we have great memories about these clips. We hope you enjoy them. Well, hello, everybody. I'm Dr. Lucy Scarborough, and, and I'm the president and the, uh, of the El Paso Chopin Piano Festival. And with me are two of my cohorts and good friends, and also very valuable committee members of the El Paso Chopin Society. And we have Joyce Whiteside. Hi, I'm a retired instructor from EPCC and a longtime member of the Chopin Festival Committee. And Adam Bakinski. Yes, it's a pleasure to be here. Thank you so much for having us. As a teenager, that's when I first fell in love with the music of Frederick Chopin. Uh, my mother was a, a musician. She had orchestra and bands and everything. And uh, she'd have me play the piano and accompaniment. But I just played it, just played it because she told me to. But when I heard Chopin, now the way I heard Chopin, well, there was a concert artist from New York. His name was Maurice Lickman. And uh, uh, he would play on Wednesday. And my teachers would actually let me out of out of school so I could run home and hear Marie Slickman play Chopin. So they'd let me week after week run out and hear him play. Then my mother heard that, that he was coming to Santa Fe, New Mexico. And so she wrote to him and asked if he would accept me as a student. And he did. So that summer, and it so happened and it was several years and I, I turned 16. And he was a beautiful teacher and he put me through all of this all of the uh, etudes of Chopin, the monstrous works of Chopin, and, and he had me give a recital. And it was until after, after I left him for many times, I looked up uh, his bio and said, he was one of the leaders in the, in the movement in New York. And I, th I think you can still look at his name up and find that's true. But anyway, he was one, so Chopin is one who, who helped me determine that I wanted to be a musician. His music fits my hand, in fact. I, I have a, a, a replica of his hand, and my hand fits exactly Chopin's hand, and I'm proud of it. Of course, I like to boast about that. 
but uh, I also have compositions that that I used to play about about two of them, and I, and and the way I codify them, I say like the the one I'm going to do now this time I've never done by, uh, before. It's called it bolero, and I say instead of saying opus this and opus that and number that, I just say five sixteen. Five means E El Paso, uh, E for E in El Paso, and, and the P is the sixteenth. So the fifth letter in the alphabet is E, and the sixteenth is El P. P. So <laughs> that's my codification. So if you say five sixteen, you know that I wrote it in El Paso. So so then also right. on on I'm going to play a nocturne that very few people play, and then, and I've uh, all my not all my life but lately in my life. I said, I'm going to dare to do that. It's one of the last uh, nocturne that he played, that he composed, excuse me, and it's very profound and very, very mature composition uh, style. And I heard it and I said, oh my gosh, I wonder if I could ever play that. So I just decided, okay, you're always telling people they can do it, so you do it. <laughs> so I did it and I'm going to play it and I love it. People say that there's something that happens when they hear Chopin some sort of a love that takes place. And I, I also say that Chopin knows no barriers of nation or culture. All cultures love Chopin. And I can tell you that right now in this world of music, there are at least 15 Chopin concerts going on around in the world. So that, that, that sort of uh, says what I want to say about myself. But I do want to, to especially thank the El Paso Community College uh, arts, it's, it's called Salute to the Arts Program, and also the El Paso Chopin uh, Society for sponsoring this great event. Be there. You won't be the same. You'll be happy and, and have a new uh, look in life if you hear Chopin. Rubenstein said when he played Chopin, the people just start loving each other, start understanding each other better. There's something that happens during that concert. Mm -hmm. So you be there, so it'll happen to you. Whenever we had conversations with Lucy, she always brought up her childhood. She would mention her mother and how she was the 10th of 10 children and that her mother encouraged her to play the piano and how she used to accompany some of the musicians that would come to play in their house. There was always music in her house. And I think she said that she played, played the drums, uh, I believe percussion at first, and then she took on the piano. And I think she was about 14 years old when she fell in love with the music of Chopin. She just thought that was the most wonderful music that just, just dug into her heart. And that was very, very interesting. So always when she was talking about her childhood and her growing years, that, that just gave us a really good uh, vision of what she was all about. We're going to be talking a little bit to Dr. Scarborough and with Anita uh, Shing, who have been working on this. And of course, she's got a committee, a tremendous committee that helps quite a bit. Um, and so let's, let's just get started. I met Dr. Scarborough when I started working at the college in 1973. And uh, she was already working, I believe, with the college in the music as a music instructor, professor. And the college is celebrating 50 years. and and Dr. Scarborough is celebrating 25 years with this El Paso Chopin Piano Festival. Dr. Scarborough, what are your early memories of, of the college as a music instructor at the college? Well, they didn't have any music at all. And so I started the whole program and I wrote the whole program for the books. And, uh, and I had to do a lot of studying because uh, all of a sudden I was it. And so I, you were the coordinator, right. the, yes. the coordinator. And so from scratch, I built the whole program. There have been uh, modifications since, but the general format that was important to, to, the, to, to the college uh, music program is what I started, even some, some of the numbers that, that, that go with MWAP and all. I, I just, I, I loved it from the first. Yes, and you know, I, I believe we have a picture of you playing in the first graduating class. <laughs> you remember that? Can you imagine playing <laughs> for the first graduating class? That is oh so beautiful. Goodness. Your greatest love is Chopin music, Chopin's music. 
and he was a Polish. Can you tell me a little bit about Chopin? Well, he's a, a Polish composer. What he did it was he modernized the, the, the method of playing the piano. You have been uh, the founder of this El Paso Chopin Piano Festival for many years now, 25 years, and you meet these wonderful pianists from all over the world. You've been a judge. Right. You've been asked to judge. Tell me about those experiences, <laughs> and then we'll get a chance to talk to Anita in a minute. I was a judge for the, the famous competition of Chopin in Miami, and that, that, that's, that is a high judge. I mean, to me, a high honor for me, because I was with the the finest pianist And this in is the how world. you have discovered these pianists that are going to be here. Tell me about the committee, and I know you want to thank your committee. Uh, uh, I do. Uh, you want to talk, talk about the committee? Yeah, Maybe we, you should we, have a, we have a great committee. Actually, uh, I joined this committee like 17 years ago, and then I love help wherever needed me, so I, I would jump in. And uh, later on, you know, they um, turn me as like a manager. I'm doing all the liaisons uh, with the Chamasaw and then the, with the Archers, especially the uh, community college. They provide a lot of ambassador to help us out. Students. And uh, mm -hmm. yeah, and we are like a nonprofit, so yes. we need a lot of uh, community help. And, and contributions. Uh, <laughs> yes, uh, this year is our 25th anniversary, and I'm so grateful a lot of uh, people they chip in, like um, the uh, El Paso Community College, they have the sal Salute to the Arts program, and then the United Bank of El Paso, and also our uh, uh, Chopin Society. Uh, and also, right now, we have the Polish Society want to join us, you know, to help us the out Polish too. The Polish Society is yeah. gonna help. And this mm -hmm. is 25th anniversary, and Ginger uh, trying to design some buttons uh, for sale in order uh, f for us to remember all the victims, you know, in a shooting El incident. Paso yeah, so we have a theme tie out tie up with uh, uh, this year's uh, anniversary is uh, El Paso Strong Music Heals. Music Heals buttons. Oh, and music I want one of those. is very beneficial to to the creative mind. It is. It's very mindful. The whole thing is educational. Yes. Didn't Go thank ahead. them. Go ahead. Oh, I want to thank the committee and the sponsors. Without them, we couldn't do it. And uh, not only as as, music, uh, as a musician talking, but just as personal, uh, personally, the people that have met have made me a better person, I think. You are. They have enriched my life. Better. I remember Lucy as the educator, working at the college, and I can imagine she was a young woman at the time. Um, a musician, a pianist, uh, with, with music in her heart and her passion to teach students. As the first coordinator of the college, can you imagine having to start from scratch, having the department uh, in charge of the department all by herself? Um, what an opportunity, but also what a challenge. And I love the interviews that we see of her talking about Chopin and the type of mus music he, he wrote and how he, he changed um, music when piano was becoming popular. Uh, all those wonderful thoughts that, that she shared with us are so important as we pay homage to, to Lucy Scarborough from El Paso, and from El Paso Community College, from our senior adult program, and from everyone, all the the people that, that helped her through the committee work that uh, she did, and they all worked so hard. And all those pianists, can you imagine when they're here? Those musicians, those experts, those prodigies, when they hear that Lucy is gone. Because she was a judge in many of these competitions, famous co competitions. And you know, the love of her family is really, really important. Ginger, and of course her husband, Dr. Scarborough helped her a lot at the beginning, always supported what she wanted to do. And Ginger, um, when he passed, she took it on and she helped her mother uh, so much. So we have some memories of Ginger in Mature Living on one of the Mature Living shows as well. We hope you enjoy this conversation. Well, thank you for staying with us. And just to finalize our show, we have a special invitation to this wonderful, wonderful El Paso Chopin Music Festival that has been going on, I believe, for 20 years. So we've invited 
very special guest, Lucy Scarborough, who is the founder, artistic director, and also a judge for the United States uh, for this piano festival. Chopin so Chopin. competition. Mm -hmm. Chopin con that, that, I'm, that's amazing. You are an amazing lady, let me tell you. We're role model for all of us. And thank you for loving this community so much to bring these kinds of things to us. Mm -hmm. I was just asking you a little bit about your role I in the United States as a, as a judge well, and what you've accomplished. Let me just tell you, that's a, the biggest honor I've ever received in my life because it was an unexpected and, and that I would be chosen as one of the three in the United States to judge this most prestigious competition that's held every five years. And so I was a judge in 05 and a judge in 010 and now I've been asked again, which surprised me, if I would be a judge. It's three judges in the, Uni in the United States and of course three to, to four from Europe. And I'm so glad you have Ginger by your side, your producer. I'd like to see that poster because I've been seeing these posters in the community. Tell me about the three artists, musicians, pi pianists. Would you, Ginger? Well, Henry Kramer is, uh, is our first pianist who's coming this Saturday on September 6th. A fine musician who, who wants so many different competitions throughout the United States and internationally. And mm -hmm. so they can show up at 7 o'clock? That's How much start. does the it show cost? The show starts at 7 o'clock and they need to show up at least by 6.30. Because they could be turned away because it gets so full. Is it a free concert? Yes, it's free. Oh, my goodness. Other people pay for it. We get other people to, to uh, help promote this. And because uh, I want to share that with the, with the people of El Paso. There are a lot of people who can't afford uh, in anything of that sort. And of course, you know, that's, that's classical music that's way up there in the echelon of, of artistry and great music. And so sometimes people don't want to pay their money. They'd rather go to a ball game or something. So we decided. <laughs> <But the arts. laughs> You're right, the arts are so important the arts for our culture. So for important for our culture and for El Paso. You know, uh, you know the, the first thing that, that when I first started this, it was in 1995, uh, people said, in El Paso, you're going to try to get Chopin? And I said, well, you don't know El Paso. I know El Paso. And 20 they're, years later? They're, they're, they're cultured still. people, very, yes. very much formal, and, and they want the better things of life. And, and you have full houses. That's right. what's amazing is that they just love it and they expect it. And finally, in October, we're going to get to see Lu hear Lucy play the piano. Tell me some of the selections that well, you're. I'm going October to October the fourth. October the fourth at seven o'clock, and and it's at the Chamisal Memorial Theater. I, I believe that address is 800 South San Michel. Yes. And uh, uh, it's at seven o'clock again. I repeat, and it's free. Now I'm going to open up with with the seven preludes, and I, I play them. I I usually explain how. Uh, uh, Chopin and George Sand went to Mallorca in Spain, Mallorca. and that's where he, he his idea was to to create or to compose the the twenty four preludes that he had, and and preludes of course is not, doesn't just mean something before some in 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 the way Chopin wrote. He says that doesn't mean it's going to be for it's just can be anything at all, any piece at all, but it's called prelude because that was the fashion that day. And so they're short composition, and one is a, that I'm gonna play is about about uh, half, half, maybe not quite a minute, and it takes usually about 30 hours to learn those. Oh my There's a lot, lots lot of things. Practice, but if you love it, well it's, you know. And I, I think it's ingrained in your heart. And, I decided and in your to, soul and in I your did, I, didn't, I didn't want to be mathematical about how much it is, but, but a lot of people want to know how much time and how to much practice. practice and and uh, I, just the other day, well, well uh, my dentist asked me, well, you know, how much do people practice? And I said, well, when I was going to college, you know, I, I was uh, buying for a competition and I, and I won the competition. It was a six to eight hours a day. She said, how can you stand like it? Like athletes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, it's yeah. anything takes it, everything it takes effort. Because yeah. you love it. Because you and, love and it. And then, and it's a good lesson. We want to share that with, with, the, with the people because, uh, you know, as a young child for myself, 
well, I didn't, we didn't go to anything. I was the tenth of, in a ten family. But, you know, we, m my mother always uh, made sure that people came into the house and they played music and, you know, it was a happy home. But we, we didn't have that kind of, neither did we live in a place where they had that kind of thing, like Chopin uh, concerts or anything. So, so I thought, well, you know, there are people here who need to go. The music students need to hear, hear people who practice eight hours a day to see what, what's the outcome. Yes. And, you know, Chopin's music belongs to the world. You know, uh, Is that uh, why you chose it? Uh, well, you could have chosen it, any of the other you know, I, I, pianists. I made a joke about that as, as a teenager that, that Chopin was my Justin Bieber. <laughs> I, fell, <laughs> yes, I yes. fell in love with Chopin's music. Uh, and at first, uh, uh, you know, as a family of 10, we learned that we had to practice. And if you practiced, uh, yeah, that would please my mother. And, and so if you didn't, well, you'd have to do the dishes, and there were a lot of them. And so, <laughs> and so you, you practiced practice. a lot. But yeah. and I thought that, would, that was funny, but anyway. Beautiful. And Beautiful. Uh, but, but I played other things, of course, uh, but it's when I heard Chopin's music. It just it, uh, met, it met the, need, the needs at that time. Feel and I it. fell in love with Chopin's music. That was such a nice conversation we had in 2014 on Mature Living with her daughter, Ginger Yarbrough, uh, who took a really active part and, and always took an active part as a producer of these uh, festivals and these concerts. And so uh, we have Lucy the professional, the judge that was invited, such great honors that she received throughout the country. She was very well known. And then she talks about the many hours uh, that it takes to be able to perfect a piece that you're playing a performance. That to me is amazing because everything takes effort. And she just put so much into everything she did as far as a professional musician, as a professional pianist, as a teacher, and as a friend. And now we're gonna see her as part of the EPCC family. We're gonna show you um, a clip about her interview uh, when we celebrated our 50th anniversary at the college in 2019. And of course, we had to invite Lucy Scarborough to share her thoughts about uh, working at the college the early years. And I know you're gonna enjoy this one um, because we certainly do enjoy listening to her. She's a great role model for all of us here at the college. I hope you enjoy it. The way I got into the line of work is my, my family, my mother was organist and, and she had all kinds of little combos and ensembles at the home. And I played with, played in them some, t sometimes because I was seven years old, they just put me as a drummer because I could beat pretty good time. So it's because of my family. But what changed my life was I heard the music of Frederick Chopin. That's when I decided really I wanted to be a pianist and I, music was my line. Well then when I got to EPCC, well, uh, I became the, the coordinator of music and I started the entire program from scratch or nothing. Yes, I was the first music teacher for some, some time before they brought a, a second one. So I got to enjoy every bit of finding out about the college and, and the great people I was working with. I've never seen anything like that. They were gung-ho, they just had the spirit that, that uh, was needed for that. And they wanted that college to happen, and it did. Well, I played the organ for the first graduation, and that was in 1973. And there were 27 associate degree students there, or candidates, and uh, I was very excited to be able to be able to play that because I, I even thought at that time, wow, I can brag about this one these days. Now, uh, the ones who asked me to play, were, of course, was the, the president, but it, through a person that I knew. I was uh, playing theater at that time. I think we were doing the Music Man or something, and I was working with Polly Harris, very well-known person in El Paso at that time. And so, so she, she somehow or another connected with Dr. De Los Santos and said, Lucy Scarborough can play that organ for you. Believe me, she can. So he called me and there I was. I was honored. 
And then the, the other thing that, that the, the, for EPCC encouraged me, they didn't, know, they didn't know what they was encouraging, but they were also encouraging me to start the Chopin Piano Festival. You know, because Chopin is the first one that inspired me to be a musician at all. Uh, after I had started the El Paso Civic Orchestra, and uh, I, I just kept thinking about Chopin, uh, you know, what he's done for me. And so then, then I decided, I decided well, I'm going to have a Chopin festival. And and uh, but this was kind of ambitious. And I asked my husband, "What do you think of that?" Because I'd already done these other. He says, "Well, you're free to do whatever you want to. You can do it. So if you want to do it, I'll help you." And so he was. He turned into my secretary because he was. He just volunteered and wrote everything, you know, that he knows about Chopin. Of course, we did looked a lot, a lot about Chopin, and we got our first, our first uh, Chopin festival going, and everybody loved it. But we were doing it because in El Paso they don't have that cultural side. They didn't at that time. They're starting to grow, and but they didn't have that cultural experience. And as I think it had to do with when I grew up, I we couldn't afford to for me to go to, for us to go. I was a family of ten. I was a tenth. So we couldn't see those things, and so I felt like, like I want to, to, to share this with the community that I love, and so we bring the top. Last last time that they, in in the 24th last year, we brought one who's won nine national competitions. You can't do that for being a, for nobody. He's got to be the best. We hope you've enjoyed some of these clips of some of the wonderful interviews and great times we had with Dr. Scarborough uh, here on Mature Living. She was a wonderful woman, an awesome role model. Uh, she was a great mother to her family. Um, they loved her so and supported her in every way that they could. Um, she also loved her committee, who worked so hard for these many years for producing and bringing to El Paso classical music, the music of Chopin. And one of the things that I remember her mentioning to me personally was that that honorary meritorious award uh, that she received for Polish culture. That was the highlight of anything she had ever received. Of course, being a judge in many of these uh, competitions was also an honor. But you also will be able to see her on EPCC TV and the YouTube channel with Leon Blevins in an interview that he did for Perspective El Paso. So we hope you check that, that out as well. Thank you so much. And Lucy, goodbye. Lucy Scarborough, we certainly will miss you very, very much. <laughs>